a, a lot of thinking about back to basics. And so I started to think about that and what that might look like. And I started to think about my dad. My dad taught me a lot about basics. He was a great teacher. And he was my hero. And he had a great method for teaching. It was called repetition. He said the same thing over and over and over again. And he had favorite sayings. Your parents probably had favorite sayings too, but one of his was, always tell the truth and you never have to remember what you said. Did you hear that one? Say what you mean, mean what you say. Your word is your bond. Remember? And he would say, remember that strangers are friends you haven't met yet, so you better be kind to everyone. And then these two, remember where you came from and remember who you are. Aren't those great? And the way that my father taught me those things and many more was by spending time with me. And in that talk, I would always say, how was your day, Daddy? And he'd say, how was yours? And he asked me lots of questions like, what did you learn today? Did you get that question? And what have you been thinking about? What are the things you've been thinking about today? Got any problems we need to talk about? Anything that I wanted to say, I could have said it right then. And it would have been okay with my father. Isn't that a great gift? Well, those conversations, obviously, as I grew older and got involved in school activities and was in uh, after-school programs and things, I wasn't able to have those conversations every day. But we still managed to do that. And as I grew up and got married and had children of my own and moved out of state, my dad called every Saturday morning. And when I thought about basics and I think about Jesus and him as our leadership role model, what I realized in thinking about my father and the basics was that Jesus spent time with his father too. Scripture says, John 5, 19, the son can do nothing by himself. John 7, 16, he says that my teaching is not my own. Constantly referring back to the father. And what Jesus did, what we find him all of the time in Scripture, is that we find him in solitude and prayer while at the beginning of his ministry, he spent a month and a half in solitude. And then we find in all of these pivotal moments in his ministry, there was Jesus in prayer, intimate relationship with the Father. And so we look at Jesus and how he worked. Everything he did, he did through this intimate relationship. And then I realized that another thing that he did, other than prayer and solitude, is that he memorized scripture. Luke 4.4 4 says that he knew scripture. He had it in his heart. And what I realized that the very basic for Jesus was that he led out of a heart filled up with scripture and in and through this intimate relationship with the Father. We're to do the same. It was with 2 Peter 1.3 for me. His divine power gives us everything we need for a life in godliness. Everything we need. Now, what part of everything do we not get? Everything we need. And so I started to think about, if we met with the Father, what would we find? What is it that we need, that we get from Him? And this is, I found six things that I thought of that we, that we needed. The first thing I thought of was safety. You know, when I met with my father, I felt safe. There was nothing I could say, nothing that I had done that my father would not hear about or listen to or forgive me of, and I knew it. And what the Bible says to us, Psalm 32, 7, says that he's our hiding place. Have you ever needed a hiding place? I have. And then the second thing I think we find every time we meet with the Father is his love. Unconditional. Now we say unconditional, but you know that word's not really in Scripture. What it says in the Bible is everlasting, unfailing love. 
I love the passage, maybe one of my favorites. Ephesians 3, 17 through 18. It says that we're actually rooted and established in love. Rooted and established. And that if we could just grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. Do you know when we meet with the Father, something amazing happens to us. Just like in my Father, I could see myself through my Father's eyes. Did you know that? And when we meet with our Father, our Heavenly Father, and we know that we are the Beloved, isn't that an amazing thing? That we can actually understand that God loves us incredibly. And it also helps us realize that other people are the Beloved too. I think the third thing we find is value. I knew that my Father was as excited to meet with me every afternoon as I was with him. He valued our relationship. And our Heavenly Father made us for relationship. Isn't that awesome? He made us for a relationship with him. Can I tell you how special that is when you think about it? Not only does he love us with an everlasting love, not only does he know the numbers of hairs on our head, which for some of us is different than others. But he is, we are so precious to him, he bottles our tears. Did you know that? The fourth thing. I believe that we always find forgiveness. When I was seven years old, I told a lie. I hate to tell you that, but I did. And... At that point, I couldn't even say lie because that was a bad word in my house. I had to say I told a story. So I had told a story, and I had let the afternoon conversation, our lunchbox conversation, pass. And I got in bed that night, and I thought the weight of the world was on my shoulders. You know that? That kind of weight, that guilt, and I started to cry. And I called my father, and... He said, I knew something was bothering you. I was waiting for you to tell me. Are you ready now? Boy, was I ready. I couldn't wait to confess. I couldn't wait to get that off. And immediately my father hugged me and offered forgiveness. And I prayed, asked God to forgive me, and I went to sleep. Do you know scripture tells us that in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, that God is faithful and just and he will forgive us. That is a gift. And we get to walk in that forgiveness. Have you been forgiven? Do you know what that's like to need forgiveness and have someone say, I forgive you? Wow, there's freedom in that. God offers that to us. Sunday morning that he actually came to my house and knocked on my door and then literally fell at my door and he bled out in front of us but he managed to tell me who had done this thing to him. When he died a few hours later I've tracked down the guy who actually murdered my brother and I vowed to him that the next time I see him I would kill him. And you know, I had a very one-dimensional um, idea of what it was to be a leader and that was to be in charge. And I'd never ever considered Jesus to be a leader. I knew he was my savior. I knew he was um, a teacher. I knew that he was my God. I never really considered him to be a leader. One of the first scriptures that really pulled it back to me was in Matthew 20, 28. Um, and that was, the Son of Man didn't come to earth to be served, but to serve.
As I drove past him, the Lord said, stop the car. I want you to speak to him. I said, Lord, I don't know what to say to him. Lord, it is busy. There's traffic all over the place. I don't know where to pull this car over. Stop the car. I want you to speak to him. I said, yes, Lord. 200 meters further up the road, there's a little bus stop that was empty and I turned in there. So one of the things that I'd learned from the habits of, of, of people like Jesus was to hear God's voice. So spending that time in solitude and time in prayer. And that's what happened to me in the car. Before, I would have probably ignored it. But this time I knew without a shadow of a doubt that I was hearing the voice of the Lord. As he approached the car, I stepped out the car and I called him out by name. So I can only imagine what happened in his mind. Because the last time he saw me, he had seen me, I had vowed I was going to kill him. And he stopped dead in his tracks. And immediately a peace came over me. And I spoke to him, I said, I'm here in peace. And so I told him, I'm born again Christian. And the Lord has led me to you today. And I'm here to forgive you. Naturally, he was quite taken aback. So I came closer to him and I spoke to him. I said, you know, the impact and the consequences of you murdering my brother were, were vast. They, they, they affected many, many people. But today, I want you to be at peace. I want you to, be, to understand that you are forgiven. I forgive you on behalf of myself. I forgive you on behalf of my family. And I want you to find the peace that you need. 